Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to another Logic Pro 10 tutorial. We've all seen this screen before, the system overload dialog. It says the audio engine was unable to process all required data in, the, in time. You can try increasing the IO buffer size, changing and changing the multi-threading option at Logic Pro 10 preferences audio devices. So this happens when you have a session that has a lot of plugins in it, and your computer cannot keep up with all of that real-time processing. Now, if you've already changed the buffer size to make sure that it's at its highest value, and your processing threads is already at its highest value or on automatic, um, you can see this computer it does not, it only has a, two, uh, it's a, a dual core processor, so it has four threads with multi-threading. Um, so this is a pretty slow computer, pretty old. It's actually an older computer. It's a, a little 2011 or 2010 Mac Mini. There's a workaround for this. And again, this happens when you have too many plugins for your computer's processor to keep up with. So let me just hit play and we'll just recreate that one more time. Yeah, I didn't even get to hear even one note of music because uh, of all the plugins that I have in the session. The way we can get around this is to freeze the processing on our tracks, to freeze our tracks. Um, so the way you can show this is right click on one of your track headers and go down to track header components. And from here, go down to um, freeze, uh, right here, freeze, and turn that on. And what this will do is it'll put this little snowflake looking icon on not all, but some of your tracks. Now, what freezing your tracks does is it essentially freezes the processing and automation on the tracks. So if you pull this, I'm just gonna swipe down and turn freeze on in all of these tracks. If I were to hit play right now, it's gonna take a couple minutes to sort of uh, print or flatten down all of the tracks into an offline audio file. And that's what it does. No matter what number of plugins you have on a track, if even if you have a ton of plugins on a track, what it's gonna do is it's going to flatten and freeze down all of these plugins down to an audio file so that the uh, computer no longer has to process all of these plugins in real time, therefore freeing up some processing power for your computer and then therefore avoiding that system overload dialogue. So you'll also notice that some of these tracks have a green freeze icon and others have a blue freeze icon. Um, the ones that are in green, if you click on a track and go up to the track uh, inspector window here, you'll see that there's a freeze mode and there's actually two options. There's source only and pre-fader. Source only um, freezes the source but does not freeze the, um, the, the effects plugins and the automation. Um, so typically you want pre-fader to be on for all of these. Um, the reason why some of them are on source only and sometimes what it'll do is it'll, like if you have a track with no effects on it, like my first Tom here, it'll automatically choose source only for us because there's no point in having a pre-fader freeze on a track that has no um, effects on it. So things like my kick drum here where I do have effects, I'm gonna change this to pre-fader. My overheads, I do have effects on the track. On the track, so I'm gonna choose uh, pre-fader as well. And all these other ones are pre-fader as well. Just the toms don't have any effects on the track, so there's no point in, in doing a pre-fader freeze on those. So I'm gonna hit spacebar. And what you're gonna see is that it's freezing all the tracks. It'll take a little while, but once you freeze all these tracks once, you'll never have to do it again. So while this is freezing, let me just explain a few things. Um, you'll notice that aux tracks, like my guitar aux and my drum bus here, do not have a freeze button. Aux tracks cannot be frozen. They have to, uh, you, like, because you're essentially summing together multiple channels or sending channels over to those aux tracks, they have to be um, played in real time. So therefore any, effects on those aux tracks are still going to be played in real time. And multi-output instruments cannot be frozen either. So you have to just sort of deal with that. Also keep in mind if you're just trying to freeze a couple tracks as opposed to all of the tracks in the session, this freezing process won't take nearly as long. So I'll be right back once this is all done and we'll play the session. All right, now that we've got all of our tracks frozen, let's see if we can play back the track without any issues. Let's jump up to the chorus where there's a lot more going on. Okay, 
And it looks like we're all good now. Um, keep in mind that once you freeze a track, you'll no longer be able to edit any plugins or play with any automation on the track, although you can still adjust the volume. On the source only um, freeze mode tracks, you can add additional plugins and you can also edit those plugins as well, but that's only on the source only freeze tracks. If you've got it on Prefader, you won't be able to edit any of the plugins. So what you'd have to do is unfreeze the track, edit the plugin the way you want it to be edited, and then refreeze the track. All right, so that's what freezing tracks can do for you. It can alleviate the issues of that system overload dialogue popping up over and over and over again because your computer's processor can't keep up with all the plugin processing. So as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As a little bonus uh, at the end of this video here, I'm going to play this entire track. Um, basically what this is, is it's a song um, from my old band, uh, Right Stripped. Uh, that was a band I formed uh, with a buddy of mine from high school way back in 2003. This song we recorded uh, on pretty much a shoe, uh, shoestring budget um, in the drummer's house. And uh, instead of like the, the normal treatment, I would give drums where I'd have, you know, top and bottom snare, uh, in and out kick, overhead mics, room mics, you know, I'd end up normally I'd end up having 12 or 14 channels of drums. We did this with literally five close mics, one on the kick, one on the snare, and then three for the toms, and then a stereo pair of cheap overhead mics. Um, so basically seven channels for drums. I've had to go back and do some fancy drum replacement. Um, use some uh, re uh, careful reverb uh, use on aux tracks to simulate room mics. Um, I reamped the guitars because they were all done just DI um, through the you know the Logic amps way back when we recorded this. I've reamped all these through the Kemper, reamped all the uh, the bass, or I think I at least added some different processing for the bass. Um, retuned the vocals and re just overall retooled a lot of things on this. So this is a remaster of a song that we recorded 10 years ago and, and wrote 10 years ago. Although the album version didn't come out until 2010, uh, which was seven years ago, um, we actually wrote and recorded this 10 years ago. So this is a very old, well, it's not that old, but it's for me, it's an older recording that I've always wanted to go back and uh, retool and remaster. So anyway, here is uh, Silence the Hatred from Right Stripped. <laughs> 